Okay. okay, guys, we have um, June 19th, paper three. Uh, the variant is three, two. So let's start it. The first question is on the binomial expansion. The formula that we have to use is, let me write that if you have, you have to have one in the beginning here, one plus X raised to power N, where N in your P3 is mostly a negative or a rational or a decimal, like, you know, value. So this is one plus NX plus N into N minus one over two factorial x squared. And then you have uh, n into n minus one into n minus two over three factorial. And then you have x cubed and so on. That is how we go on the chart. Okay. So <clears throat> this is three minus x here. There is no need to be worried about expanding it. Some people literally start expanding this three minus X. Okay. So this is, this already is in the simplest form. Then you have this one plus three X to the power one over three. So you have to show that formula being applied here. One plus N X plus N into N minus one into this X squared plus n and I just missed the two factorial here. Okay, n into n minus one into n minus two over three factorial. And then you have this three x cube. Since we are only interested up to the power three x cube. So <clears throat> I'll just leave it up to here. So this is three minus X after simplifying, we get one plus X. Okay. Achha, it's good to, not to be uh, impatient or hasty while uh, especially solving your questions on algebra. So I have done a step here. This is one over three. This one over three minus one is minus two over three. And then this is this half is basically for this two factorial. And then we have nine X squared. Then we have one over three. 1 over 3 minus 1 is minus 2 over 3. And <clears throat> 1 over 3 minus 2 is minus 5 over 3. And this 3 factorial is written as 1 over 6. And then we have 27 x cubed. So let's uh, simplify them as much we can. So these 3 cancel out this 9 here. 2 cancels this 2 here. Uh, 3 into 3 into 3 is 27. And this two times three is six. Okay. So we have three minus X. That is one plus X. And be very careful about the sign. There's just one minus over here. So we have minus X squared. You know? And here we have minus into minus plus. This is plus one over three X cubed. You see, there are three, four marks for this. Yeah, thank you, five over three, because this five is still here, okay. So five over three X cubed. Okay, we have to uh, keep an eye on this target that we have to keep it up to X cubed. So um, now this is, I'm going to expand this. Three into one is three plus three X minus 3x squared and plus 5x cubed. Yes. Okay. It's just 5x cubed. Now this minus x into one is I'm going to write it under this so that I can simplify them easily. Minus x into plus x is going to be minus x squared and minus x into minus x will be plus x cubed. There is no need to multiply these two together because this would result into x is square four. So just ignore that. So this is going to be three plus two X minus four X square plus six X cubed and so on. So let's check the answer. Here is the answer to this. Uh, where is the answer? I think I have taken some other papers. Uh, 
Okay, now we have made a major mistake here. We didn't read out the question carefully. If we have read the question, then I didn't really need, it, need to uh, simplify this term over here. So nevertheless, no, no time is wasted here because this, this was not a harder term here. Anyhow, we need to read the, the statement carefully before we start solving it. So we had to find uh, the coefficient of x cubed. So the answer is going to be this. You have to highlight this at the end that the examiner has to see this value highlighted at the end because this is your answer, okay? So let's move to the next question. The second question here. You can give it a try before I start solving it. Okay, the second question, is, it says show all necessary working, showing all necessary working solve this equation, giving an answer correct to two decimal places. Now, clearly this is a question on um, the indices or the exponential equations. So you see there's a plus going on between these terms here. So uh, normally we try to use this rule here that if you have um, um, a raised to power x equal to b raised to power x, or if you have a raised to power x equal to a raised to power y, like the same basis or the same powers on both the sides, so you equate them accordingly. But here you will have to do through the substitution, okay? So you can see that if you have three raised to power x, your y, okay? So you, you can say like three raised to power x that is equal to y. Then this would imply that nine raised to power x, which is basically three square raised to power x, okay? So this can also be written as three raised to power x, and then there's a square on it. So this nine raised to power x can be replaced with the y square. So this equation now becomes um, y square that is equal to y plus 12. So this is y square minus y plus 12, uh, sorry, minus uh, 12. y square minus y minus 12, that is equal to zero. This is clearly, it is going to be y minus four into y plus three equal to zero. So your y is four or your y is equal to minus three. Now you put them back equal to three raised to power x because we are not, we were not supposed to just find the value of y. We are basically looking for the value of uh, x. So uh, when your y is four, so that means your three raised to power x is going to be four. So you apply the logarithm on both the sides, ln three raised to power x, that is equal to ln four. This is x ln 3, that is equal to ln 4. So x is going to be ln 4 over ln 3. Use your calculator here. And for the second one, um, then you have 3 raised to the power x, that is equal to minus 3. So remember any number, any positive uh, number with any power on it can never result into a negative value, okay? Just remember this uh, graph as well. Like, you know, this is what you have whenever you have a positive base and you have an, a power on it. So um, this is not possible here, okay? So there's no solution from here. So you only have one value. What is this ln four by ln two? One point? One point? One point two six. So this is the only solution for this x, x equal to 1.26. Let me quickly check the answer. Uh, second question, it says 1.26 only, okay? So we move on to the third question then. So here is the third question. Uh, he has really taken a very slow start here and started with very easy questions. This is a straightforward question on trigonometry. So please give it a try first. So before you try this, I should give you the formulas here. Um, uh, basically you will be needing the tan two theta formula here. That is going to be two tan theta over one minus tan square theta. 
Now, whenever you have tan or cotangent in your equation, uh, this is uh, up to you, like where you have to decide that would you keep that in terms of tan or would you change them into sine over cos, okay? So if you look at this tan two theta's formula over here, what do you suggest? Would you be keeping that in terms of tan or you would be changing that into sine over cos? Hmm? Yeah, it is better to keep that in terms of tan because uh, when you uh, reciprocate this, this would become the, like, you know, you know, this cotangent two theta would be one minus tan square theta over two tan theta. So you let it be in terms of tan, and then you can like, you know, solve this. So this equation becomes cotangent to, I'm starting from here, that is two, two tan theta. So this is one minus tan square theta over two tan theta, that is equal to two tan theta. Okay, so one minus tan square theta is going to be four tan square theta from like you know here. So this is going to be five tan square theta is equal to one tan square theta is one over five and your tan theta is plus minus one over under root five. Okay. So never forget to write this plus minus whenever you apply the square root yourself. So we are just to be within these two first two quadrants. Now keep your calculators. You must check your calculators mode as well whenever you're going to find the sine, cos, or tan inverse. Okay. So we are going to be in both of these two quadrants. And tell me what is tan inverse of one over under root five. Hmm? Okay. Yeah, 24 to one decimal place. Angle, we write the angle back to one decimal place, okay? 24.1, okay? So this is 24.1. So this theta over here is 24.1. And 180 minus 24.1 is 155.9. Okay, this is 155.9 degrees. So time to check the answer here. Um, so here are, um, okay, so these are the two values of um, this. It, it has written here 24.1 and then 155.9, okay? So we have to obtain the second answer. Uh, okay, so we go back to the paper. I have to clear this. Let's see what's in the fourth question. Okay, another straightforward question because there is no thinking process required over here. You can simply start solving it. It says find the exact coordinates of the point on the curve at which the gradient of the tangent is equal to one over four. So a question on calculus, please try this. So it's a question on calculus, differentiation. Uh, you need two formulas here one for the uh, d by dx. It's really good to write the formulas in the beginning of your, or wherever you're going to use that, okay? Sometimes while we are busy finding an unknown value, we make a mistake while uh, like you know, rewriting or uh, the formula in our working. So this is v square. And by the way, these formulas are given in your formula booklet, so you must be able to be familiar that where would you be finding those formulas without wasting any time. This is one thing that you need to know. And the second thing is you will have to differentiate this ln x. So the derivative of ln x is one over x. You need to know this. Okay, so uh, my u is x and my v is one plus ln x. So, u dash is going to be one and v dash is going to be one over x. Therefore, this dy by dx will be, dy by dx will be, we have this one plus ln x whole square, okay? And I have one plus ln x 
times one, I don't need to write that minus uh, x times one over x. Okay, so a little bit of the simplification here. We should not be wasting the time where when we are given certain values. Uh, okay, we're given the gradient, not the value of x. So we, this can be useful to simplify this. So I'll be putting this equal to one over four. So this uh, four ln x is equal to one plus ln x whole square. Okay. Before, before you think about expanding the square, I think it would be better if you substitute this ln x with something. Anna? So let's say this, uh, let this ln x is equal to, let's keep this a because y is already there. So this is uh, 4a is equal to one plus a whole square. So I'm going to expand the square. One plus two a, plus a square. I have replaced this with a. So one plus a whole square is going to be this. So we have a square <clears throat> minus two a plus one. That is equal to zero. This gives us um, a minus one whole square equal to zero. Okay. And then you have your a equal to one. When your a equal to one, this means that your ln x is equal to a, okay? So I can say that, okay, putting this a back as ln x, so this ln x is going to be one. So x is going to be ln inverse of one. So ln inverse of one is e to the power one, and that is simply going to be e, okay? And then you put this back into the y so that you can find, because he's asking for the exact coordinates of the point. So we have to give the both the coordinates, not just the x coordinate. So this y is going to be e plus e over one plus ln e. So this is going to be e over two or half e. Therefore, that required point is e comma half e. Yes? Okay, so quickly check the answer. So this is, yeah, this is absolutely right. E, X is equal to E and Y is equal to half E. Okay, so time to move to the next question. Okay, oh, this is going to be a big question on the, uh, complex numbers. So you try this then I'll follow you guys. Okay, we have been told that throughout this question, the use of the cal calculator is not permitted. So that is basically a helpline for you guys. Keep away from the calculator. You can nevertheless take hints to the calculator. Okay, but don't show that working on the calculator. So I'll show you how you can do this without the calculator. Now it says it is given that the complex number, this is a root of this given equation. Write down another root of the equation. So that is simply going to be um, its conjugate pair, okay? So he has given us so much, um, sorry. Okay, so much space for that. I wonder why did he give, this is really confusing, okay? Its answer is only, minus one minus under root three iota, that's it. It's conjugate pair, that's it, okay? So um, then it says um, in the next part that um, find the value of K and the third root of the equation. So finding the value of K. So if you substitute your, uh, um, this root into it, so you can easily, determine the value of k. You will have to do that, okay? And for that purpose, you need to recall the binomial theorem of P1 as well, okay? So I'm going to do this working in this area over here, okay? So I have these two roots with me. Uh, one is minus one plus under root three iota. The other is minus under root three iota over here, okay? 
Now there are six marks. There are many ways of doing it. Now one way is again just to substitute this directly over here. Okay, and the second way is uh, to find that quadratic expression, which is a factor of all of this. Okay, and we can do that very quickly. Uh, so I'll be finding that quadratic expression, which is a root of this. Okay, so that will make our life easier. Let's do that. Uh, for that, I would be asking you guys to recall that the identity that I told you. Uh, I'll tell you once again. Suppose, guys, you have two roots. One is alpha, and the other is beta. Okay, one is alpha, and the other is beta. So this becomes x minus alpha equal to zero. This is x minus beta equal to zero. This is going to be x minus alpha into x minus beta. That is equal to zero. So if you expand this, this becomes x squared minus alpha plus beta x and plus alpha beta. So similarly, this is your alpha over here, and this is your beta. Just to find that quadratic expression, which is the factor of this cubic expression cubic polynomial let's use this rule over here okay now if my alpha is minus 1 plus under root 3 iota and my beta is minus 1 minus under root 3 iota you can tell me quickly what is alpha plus beta that is simply minus 2 that is simply minus 2 and then you can also tell me what is alpha beta and again, if you remember that if you have a plus iota b times a minus iota b, so that is equal to a square plus b square, a square plus b square. So you see this is minus alpha. This is the same situation, a plus uh, b and a minus b and there's iota as well. So this is going to be minus one square and then you have plus under root three square. So this is one plus three, that is going to be four. That is your alpha beta, okay? A square plus B square. Okay, so that quadratic factor of this whole equation is going to be X square. Look at this, there is minus of this sum. So minus of this sum will give you plus two X. And then you have plus four, that is equal, I mean, sorry, uh, that is the uh, quadratic factor of this, okay? So we have found with all this working, you have to show all this working because there are six marks for this. Now, how to get to the value of K, okay? Now, can I say, guys, can I say, okay, so this is the quadratic factor, is the, you must mention this, is the quadratic factor of the given equation. Agar aap cubic lik do, so that would be better, the given cubic equation. There are two ways of finding this. I will be using the easier way over here. Can I say, guys, x squared plus 2x plus 4 times ax plus b is going to be equal to kx cube plus 5x square plus 10x plus 4. The, cub uh, the cubic polynomial is a product of a quadratic and um, um, okay, so uh, yes. Okay, so this was your um, quadratic expression. Just, just, just a minute. So we can compare the uh, constants over here. Uh, so we get 4b. Look at this. Um, this 4 into b, that is going to give you. So I'm writing here, comparing the constants on both the sides, okay? So I should put the identity mark here. So this is going to be like this. So this 4B, that is equal to 4. So your B is equal to 1. So we have got one thing. Now let's compare the coefficients of X squared. 
comparing the coefficients of x square so let's do that comparing the coefficients of x square i just need some space here so i'm making that okay comparing the coefficients of x square so x square so x square into b would give us one coefficient which is b and 2x into ax will give us another term in um, x square that will give us 2ax square so we have 2a over here and that is equal to 5 using the value of b over here we have 2a plus 1 that is equal to 5 so your a is going to be 2 a is going to be 2 and then you can simply compare the coefficients of x cube comparing the coefficients of x cube so you have kx cube over here okay so this is k and then you have ax cube over here that is going to be equal to a so your k is going to be equal to 2 so uh in through same working we have got both the values we have got the value of k which is 2 and we have got the third uh root of this equation in fact the third linear factor which is going to be 2x plus 1 okay let me write it here 2x plus 1 is the third linear factor so if you put that equal to 0 so you get the third root of this equation that is x equal to minus r so there was a lot of working to reach to this conclusion over here theek hai so if there is no question we can move on to the next question then did i have to use the calculator anywhere hmm so you see okay so we are going to move on to the next question here there was so much space was given for this Okay, this is the sixth question. You read this, go through this, and then we try this. So we're resuming this uh, June nineteen variant P uh, two question number six. We have done up to question number five. Okay, so Daisy says uh, using triangle OAB to show use triangle OAB to show that AB is equal to two R cos X. Remember, whenever you people um, have uh, two radii and a chord. inside a circle you will always be having an isosceles triangle and you should be really familiar with all the properties of um, an isosceles triangle okay so over here if this is x radians this is going to be x radians as well okay if this is your r this is your r as well so this is an isosceles triangle and i can have its line of symmetry here okay so you should use this line of symmetry okay and suppose this point over here is m so this am is going to be equal to this bm and we have uh, two right angle triangles within this triangle oab so can i say that this length is going to be r cos x yes and this length is also going to be r cos x so we have shown that this ab is this ab is going to be twice this am so that is 2r cos x okay and if you're not showing any working here you can write in the brackets that please refer to the diagram okay because you have shown all your working on the diagram okay so this is quite clearly uh, like you know you have uh, shown this i uh, a o a b to be an isosceles triangle and then you have managed to show that this ab is 2r cos x okay now i have to just minimize this so that i, I can do the uh the next part here okay so remember now we have this uh, this ab is 2 r cos x over here okay it says hence now when what do you get from this word hence here yeah we, we have to use this this part one's working so hence show that x is cos inverse of all of this okay so x so this means i have to use this condition as well okay 
that the, the shaded area is equal to blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now, what is the shaded area? Hmm? The shaded area is going to be the area of all of the sector. Anna? So what is the area of a sector, guys? Half R square theta. And you, now your theta is basically 2x. Okay. And your R, the radius over here, let me write this as a capital R. That is 2R cos x. So you will be using these two uh, things here to, to determine the shaded area. And then what is the area of a semicircle? Half pi r squared. So it says the area of the shaded region is half the area of the semicircle. So we can say that this half 2r cos x squared into 2x that is half r square theta. That is half of the half pi r square. Okay. If you simplify this, you can see that we can um, <clears throat> cancel out. Let me just do one more step. So this is, this is clear to you. This is going to be half into this half is cancelled like this. So you have four r square and then there is an x over here and then you have cos square x that is uh, 1 over 4 pi r square okay so we can cancel out the r square with the r square okay and then we have um, this um, we need just x to be here okay so this is going to be 16x, 16x cos square of x, that is going to be equal to pi. Anna? So then you have cos square x, that is going to be pi by 16x. And when you take the square root, you get this, this x is going to be cos inverse of um, square root of pi by 16x okay so from this i can move on to the next part guys uh, okay i need to write this in the side here that what was this equation x equal to um, cos inverse of the square root of pi by 16 x okay so it says uh hence show that x is this okay we have shown then it says verify by calculation that x lies between 1 and 1.5 so this is your numerical solution of equations x lies between 1 and 1.5 okay um so um you can use any of these forms here um can I write this equation? You can use this as it is, or if you want, you can use this um, cos, let me use this as it is here. Okay, so my equation is now x minus cos inverse of this pi by 16x, and that is equal to zero. Okay, and you have to name this as f of x so guys you will have to find keep your calculators more than radians okay you find f of 1 and then you find f of 1.5 there should be a difference of sign here in these uh, values okay please do that So we have seen here the uh, difference of the signs between them. This one is negative. Uh, uh, this one is negative and this one is positive. So you have to write down here the difference. Uh, the difference of the signs. The difference of the signs of this f of 1 and f of 1.5 shows that you yeah, verifies you yeah, suggests that x is between 
वन एंड वन पॉइंट फाइव ठीक है सो दैट इज वन ऑफ द टिपिकल पार्ट ऑफ क्वेश्चन ऑन नमेरिकल सोल्यूशन ऑफ इक्वेशन वॉट आर दीज वैल्यूज ओके दिस इज माइनस जीरो पॉइंट वन Zero point. I I don't know whose answer is right over here. Okay. Huh? Okay. Anyhow, so this is going on in in the recording. Okay, and I wonder what the Russian people would be thinking about it. You see, my channel is mostly seen in Russia. Okay. Um, after Pakistan. Okay. I don't know what to say here. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, the fourth part here it says use a nitrative formula here uh, this formula to be used and we have to give the result of each iteration to five decimal places acha uh, one of the students was asking that she is always confused that what is going to be that initial value to be used in this iterative formula okay so in this case this is quite clear that your initial value can be this x equal to x1 can be one that is your initial value sometimes you are asked to draw uh, i mean um, the graphs okay and from the point of intersection you can have an idea ke which is going to be your initial value okay and this sometimes this becomes a hit and trial situation because you have to take a value that has to like you know convert somewhere okay if your value is not like if your iterative formula is not converging to a certain value that means you need to change your initial value anyhow so guys here is the uh, so we're going to change this into an iterative formula over here this is your x i'll write this as x n plus 1 okay and this is going to be the right hand side would be uh, pi over 16 x n okay so we start this from x1 to be 1 and you have to show this step where you people um substitute this x1 into this formula here so you have to show that the x2 is going to be please keep your calculators mode in radians okay this is going to be pi over 16 and do keep this in brackets because in the second step and onwards this has to be changed with the answer okay so what do you get guys give me this correct to five decimal places do you intuzar yes beta so how come hamara formula isn't x minus cos inverse of 5 by 16x this is the formula over here beta this has to be this always has to be x equal to okay and i think i yes, told sir. you that when we were doing fsc we had like this is a part of the syllabus of fsc where you have to formulate this uh, iterative formula but here you given that okay so remember this has to be x equal to something okay So this was really an important question. Yes. So what is this value over here? Seven, three. Okay. Um, so you go back now. There is no need to show this working here. You only need to show the answer here. So you go back and replace this um, one here with the answer in your calculator, and just keep on telling me that what do you get? just just a minute okay i have to write it down so um, so once it has started con converging up to two decimal places you can stop there okay so you see that this is uh, consistently 1.143 okay so then you can say okay uh, hence therefore the root is going to be 1.14 correct to sorry three significant figure decimal places 1.1 4 3 that is your x here okay you can show dots here okay so that is that was the end of this question number 6 i think yes and now we move on to the seventh question okay so again you guys have to try it yourself first and then i'll be doing it okay we have a question from differential equations this is rather an easier question because there is not much thinking required over here you see um we don't have to formulate any differential equation we 
only have to solve this, okay, and giving y in terms of x. So uh, one side of this will have dy, the other side will have dx. So we need to split up this e raised to power x plus y, okay? So you will allow me to write it as um, x e raised to power x times e raised to power y, okay? So now this is going to be dy over e raised to power y, and this is x e raised to power x dx. So this is quite nicely separated. The left hand side has all the things in y, the right hand side, all, they have all the things in x over here, okay? So we put the integration sign here. So um, this is going to become e raised for minus y. Okay, let me write that e raised for minus y. And how would you be integrating the right hand side? Yeah, integration by parts. So it's good to write that formula for the integration by parts. The integral of uv dash is uv minus u dash v. Okay, so we have um, for this, our u is x and our v dash is e raised to power x. So u dash is going to be one and v is going to be e raised to power x. So v dash, we write v dash and we have to integrate it, okay? So now this is going to be x e raised to power x minus, I should go horizontal, minus one e raised to power x dx. So this becomes, e raised to power minus y over minus one. I can write it as minus this. This is x e raised to power x and then minus e raised to power x. This is the time when I can write plus c here because the integration is over, okay? Now we have been given these two values here so that we can determine the this uh, c over here, okay? So using these given values, this is minus e raised per zero is minus one. This is zero minus one plus c. So do we get this c to be zero? Yes? Okay. So therefore, now we are left with minus, let me cut down this minus here. Let, let me write it as e raised to power minus y. And the other side will be written as e raised to power x. And I'm going to take common as well minus x and that's it okay we need to have y in terms of x this is e raised to power minus y how can i make this y ln okay so we apply the natural log on both the sides so this becomes uh, minus y ln e and this is ln of this e raised to power x into one minus x okay let me clear this area over here so that we can do working in this area. Oh, sorry, let me keep this white. Okay. So uh, now this is going to be minus y. That is, can I write the uh, right hand side as ln e raised to power x plus ln 1 minus x? Hmm? And this is going to be uh, y is equal to minus of x plus ln 1 minus x. Okay? So that is your y. Yes, we So original equation, we have to find the differential. So wasn't it minus e raised to power minus y? Yeah, it was minus e raised to minus y. So, sir, plus y ni on jayega shuru me. We took a, a minus common, beta. No, hmm. sir. I mean, you have right side pe blue me likha hai e raised power minus y is equal to wo. So it was minus e raised power minus y. So, jab hum ln lenge, to y automatically positive ni ho jayega. I think before that we we took minus as common. Anna? Yeah, we, we have seen that. Okay, so let's just confirm the answer from here. Uh, this is, oh, this is covered with this. Just remember this answer. Okay, I have to erase this. Okay, 
Uh, let's see the answer from here. This is question number seven, I think. Hmm? Question number seven here. Okay, this is, uh, where do we have? Yeah, we have both of them as minus. So we are doing this correctly. Okay, so now this, this first part is done. So can you please tell me what was this, that equation? Because there is still one more part left here. So this is y is equal to minus x minus ln one minus x. Okay, so now we go into the second part, see what's there. Oh, so much space given for the, okay. Explain why x can only take values that are less than one. Yeah, because you know, ln only exists if this thing over here has to be positive. So this thing has to be positive. So one minus X has to be positive. So minus X is going to be greater than minus one and X is going to be less than one. So this is justified here. X is less than one. Okay. So can I move on to the eighth question then? Okay. Question number eight. Okay, this should not be any problem for you. Let's look at the second part and then we decide how many uh, fractions we can have. Uh, is it, it to be integrated? Yeah, this is to be integrated. When you have to integrate, you will try to write as many fractions as you can. And if the second part was from the binomial expansion, then you could write the lesser number of fractions over here, okay? So guys, start doing this. So I'm going to start working right from here. Okay, we have to write the partial fractions for this. Okay. So this would be A over two X plus one plus B over two X plus three and then plus C over two X plus three whole square and you should always make a check that that if this is a proper fraction or an improper fraction i didn't do that so i'm just checking that so if it's an improper fraction you know how to deal with that okay <clears throat> so therefore now this 10x plus 9 is going to be a into 2x plus 3 whole square plus b into Sorry, this is two. Oh, what am what am I doing? A into two x plus three times two. When I say like that, oh, sorry, sorry. Um, this is square here. Okay, so this b times two x plus one into basically this two x has confused me. This two x plus three. And then you have plus C into 2X plus 1. Okay. So we start by putting X equal to minus half. So we shall put X equal to minus half. So this is minus 5 plus 9. And all of these B's and C's, they are eliminated. We can get this A here. So A into minus one plus three is two, two square. So this is four equal to four A and your A is going to be equal to one. Okay. Next we put X equal to minus three by two. Uh, I hope you people know why am I putting this as minus three by two? Hmm? Yes. Okay. So, <clears throat> so that we can get rid of these expressions two X plus three. Basically I have kept this two X plus three equal to zero so that I have this X as minus three. So I want this to be zero. So this is going to be uh, 10 into minus three by two plus nine. And this time we'll be getting this C, the C into 2 into minus 3 by 2 plus 1. So this is 5 minus 15 minus 15 plus 9 
and here you have minus three plus one. So we have minus six equal to minus two C. So your C is three. I hope I'm going right here. Hmm? Okay, next I will be comparing the coefficients of maybe X square. Okay, because I need this B. Or you can put X as zero. You can put X as one, you can put, so I think I should put X as zero, that is easier. Okay, so let's put, put X equal to zero. So the left hand side is nine. The right hand side is A into three square. This is B into one into three. And then you have C into one. So this is nine, we have A. So one into nine is nine. We have uh, this three uh, B and then we have three. You know? So this gives us B equal to minus one, okay? So this has become, let me write it here so that I can clear this off. Okay, let me go to the next part <clears throat> so that I can use this working here and then I'll erase it. Okay, it says hence show that the integral of this over here, the integral of this thing is um, this, okay? So let me quickly write this integral of from zero to one f of x dx is basically integral of, I'll be writing all these fractions here. So we have, one over, what was that one over? Okay, one over two X plus one, then minus one over two X plus three, and then we have plus three over two uh, X plus three whole square. Okay, so we have this question now with us, okay? So let's integrate this. Um, first of all, to be able to integrate this one over two X plus one, what should I have in the numerator? Two, okay. This is two over two X plus one, and I'll have to write a half with this as well. Okay, there is a bracket and let me, There has to be a bracket here and then you have this from zero to one. Okay. The next one, uh, yeah, again, we need a half here. This is minus half into this two over two X plus three. And then this can simply be switched to the numerator because this it has a power two. So this is going to be written like this. So guys, you must know this, that know this step here, that how to integrate the rational functions. If there is just power, like you see, there is a power one on all of this expression. Please never ever think of integrating or differentiating anything which is there in the denominator. So you must know that when you will have to move that to the numerator, okay? So this two X plus one cannot be moved to the numerator because this expression on the whole has a power one. When it goes up in the numerator, it will have a power minus one that we cannot manage while integrating. So we have to uh, recall here that the derivative of ln f of x is f dash of x over f of x. Therefore, the integral of f dash of x, you must be writing these things again. When you write this, you will remember this, okay? So this is the revision going on. So do write them again and again. So f dash of x over f of x dx will give you ln f of x plus c. So that is why we're trying to maintain, trying to bring the derivative of the denominator into the numerator. So the derivative of two x plus one is two. So I have brought in two, therefore I had to bring in half as well, okay? So now this is going to be uh, limit from zero to one. This is half ln 2x plus one minus half ln 2x plus three. 
and then I have plus three into two X plus three. This is your P one integration minus two plus one over minus two plus one times the derivative of this two X plus three, that is two. Okay, so we are here now. This is limit from zero to one. Oh, I'm running out of time here. So I'll resume it from the point when we, we get disconnected, okay? So this is going to be half ln three. Let me apply the limits here, okay? Minus half ln five plus, this is going to be three, uh, this is minus three over two. And you have, when you put here, over five here, okay? And then minus, when you put zero here, uh, this is gonna be half ln one is zero. This is zero minus half ln three. And then you have here, when you put zero here, this is minus three by two over, you have three here, right now? So just write it down, this, is, this will go. So this is what we had before this disconnection took place. So guys, um, I was applying the limits here. Um, I have to show all of this to be equal to this thing here, okay? So uh, when we put one here, this is gonna be, uh, okay. So this is gonna be half ln three minus half ln five minus three over two into five, right now? and then minus, when I put zero here, I have half ln one, which is going to be zero, minus half ln three, and minus three over two into three. That is what we have after applying the limits. So this is going to be half, ln three minus half ln five minus three over 10. This is zero plus half ln three. And then we have minus one over two. Plus. Yeah, plus, this is plus, thank you, Vida. Plus one over two. Okay, so uh, half, half, half. So you see, we have a half here with the ln as well. So let's maintain that half. So this is half. Remember what is ln A plus ln B guys? Yeah, and if there is ln C as well, so that is ln A, B over C. But writing these side notes, even when you're attempt, uh, attempting these solutions, that is really, a, I mean, a positive gesture from you people that you know all these things, okay? So this is really impressive if you show these properties here. So this is gonna be, um, half ln three into three over five, right? three into three over five. And then you take the LCM here. This is gonna be LCM is 10. So you have minus three and then you have plus five. Okay. So I think we have shown that this is half ln nine over five and then plus two over 10 is gonna be one over five. So we have shown this, okay? So let's go on to the next question. Question number nine. Um, let me see if I have to do this because you know the syllabus has been cut down here. It says the, the points A and B have the position vectors this and this, and the line L has equation this. Show that L does not intersect the line passing. Yes, this is a part of your syllabus. We have to do this. Okay, so we have to show that the line L does not intersect the line passing through A and B. So first of all, we need to have the line through A and B. So the line AB, that is going to be R equal to A plus lambda B. Okay, A can be any of these two points and then you, this B is the direction vector of this line, okay. So this AB is going to be R equal to one, two, minus one, plus lambda into 
So I'm going to do that B minus A over here, okay? And I'll be doing that mentally. Or oh, let me write it here. It says um, three, one, one, minus this one, two, minus one. That is, I'm finding the, the direction B, the direction vector of this uh, line AB, line through A, A and B. So this is three minus one is two, one minus two is minus one, one plus one is two. That is the equation of the line through A and B. Next, you need to have the, the parametric equations, okay? So you can say from A, B, we have X equals one plus two lambda, Y equals two minus lambda, and Z equals minus one plus two lambda. So this is the first set of parametric equations. And then from uh, the line L, okay, from line L. So you have X equal to two plus mu, Y equal to one plus mu, and Z equals to one plus two mu. Please keep checking my working guys, okay? So these are the two sets of these parametric equations of uh, these two lines. So basically we, we have to solve them simultaneously. So we have to have the parametric equations, okay? Now from one and two, from one and two, you have one plus two lambda that is equal to two plus mu. And I can say that mu is going to be two lambda minus one. That is equation number one. Then equating the y's, you have um, two minus lambda, that is equal to one plus mu. And again, I'm going to write it as mu is equal to one minus lambda. That is the equation number three. And then uh, uh, from the z's, you have um, um, one minus, sorry, minus one plus two lambda. And that is equal to one plus two mu. So this is gonna be two lambda equal to two mu plus two. Or we can say lambda is equal to mu plus one. That is the third equation. So we have three equations in lambda and mu. Remember what to do next? Hmm? Yeah, you will solve any two of these three equations. Okay. So I think we can solve equation number one and two. They are both equal to mu. Okay. So um, we'll be solving. I'm sorry for this messy work here because I have to manage all this in this area. So both of them, this is mu and this one is also mu. So this is going to be two lambda minus one equal to one minus lambda. So you have three lambda equal to two. Yeah, lambda is two by three. And then you put that in into the first equation. You have mu equal to two into two by three minus one. So this is going to be four. This is four by three minus one. This is going to be one by three. Okay, now let's check that if these two values of lambda and mu, they really satisfy the third equation, which is over here, okay? So let's put them here. Lambda is from the third equation. So we have lambda, which is two by three, if that is equal to uh, one by three plus one. Is it plus one? Yes. Oh, we had, oh, I thought I have to show that they are intersecting. So I was really worried. So they are not equal here. Okay. So this implies that two over three is not equal to four over three. So therefore the line L and AB do not intersect. you have to write this at the end. They do not intersect. 
Any question with you from this this ninth question here? Okay. So look at its second part. The second part is no more a part of your syllabus because this involves the, the, the plain thing over here. Planes have been taken out of your, removed from your syllabus, okay? Okay, question number 10, it says a diagram shows the curve y equal to sine 3x cos x for x3 between zero and pi by two and its minimum point m. The shaded region R is bounded by the curve and the x-axis. By expanding sine 3x plus x and sine 3x minus x, show that sine 3x cos x is equal to half sine 4x plus sine 2x. So uh, you will have this formula in your formula booklet that sine alpha plus beta is sine alpha cos beta plus sine beta cos alpha. And if there is a minus over here, there will be a minus over here. So let's uh, expand this sine 3x plus x. I'm doing it here. Sine 3x plus x, okay? So this is going to be sine 3x cos x, okay? And then plus sine x and cos 3x. And then if you expand sine 3x minus x, so that would simply be um, sine 3x cos x minus sine x cos 3x, okay? So it says show that sine 3x times cos x is half sine 4x plus sine 2x. Guys, can I say that this thing is basically representing sine 4x. Yes. So this is equal to sine 4x. And this thing is going to be equal to sine 2x. Yes. So this gives us a hint that we have to add them side by side. If I add them side by side, so you will see that these two will be canceled out. Anna, uh, am I right? Yes, okay. So we have two sine 3x cos x, that is sine 4x plus sine 2x, okay. And we have quite conveniently shown that this sine 3x cos x is half of sine 4x plus sine 2x. So this was the first part here. Now keep this diagram in your mind here um, because I don't know what he is going to ask you in the second part. Using the result of part one and showing all necessary working, find the exact area of the region R, okay? So we're going to find the area of this region R over here, okay? So, what is missing? What will we have to find here? Hmm? You will have to find this coordinate here because we know that we have zero here. When you find this area, this area would be the limit from zero to this and you have sine 3x cos x. Sine 3x cos x dx. That will give you the area over here, okay? So, um, to solve this equation, to find this uh, value over here of x. So let's put this thing equal to zero. This is easier to handle, okay? So when you put that equal to zero here, let me write this in, a, in red. I'm showing all this working here because I need you guys to have a look at the diagram as well. So when I put that equal to zero, so that means either sine 3x is equal to zero or cos x equal to zero, okay? So this means your 3x is gonna be zero pi, two pi, three pi, and so on. And this means your x is gonna be pi by two or three pi by two, mm -hmm. or uh, like, you know, you, you have to go on. So we will see that X here, 
this would become 0, pi by 3, 2 pi by 3, and pi, and so on. So for these values of x, this whole equation, this whole sine 3x cos x is going to be 0. So after 0, which is a smaller value, 0 here, and here you have pi by 2, and here it is pi by 3. So I'll be taking this pi by 3 here after 0. Okay? So the limits for this is going to be from 0 to pi by 3. Okay? From 0 to pi by 3. Please, beta, get your things clear. 0 to pi by 3. And I had a hint that the next x was pi by 2. So it had to be before that pi by 2. So you can use this diagram to, to take clues from it. Okay? Now, when, when you have to integrate this, now, integrating this sine 3x cos x is easier or integrating this half sine 4x plus sine 2x? So, the right-hand side is easier to integrate. So, we'll be using the right, we'll be changing this with the right-hand side here. Okay. So, that was, what was that? I just covered that. So, this r is going to be limit from 0 to pi by 3. There was a half, I think. And then there was sine. 4x, thank you, beta, plus sine 2x dx. Okay, so this r is half into, so um, limit from 0 to pi by 3. What is the integral of sine 4x? Minus cos 4x over 4. And this is minus cos 2x over 2. So let's let me take this minus common out here. This is going to be minus 1 by 2. Okay. So cos 4x, 1 over 4 cos 4 pi by 3 plus half cos 2 pi by 3. And then minus, when I put 0 here, uh, this is going to be... 1 over 4 cos 0 and then plus 1 over 2 cos 0. Yes, Vichu? Okay, this is minus half into cos 4 by 3, 60, 240 in the third quadrant, hai na? So let me cover this area to get the exact values of this. Okay, um, so this is cos. Oh, um, cos 4 pi by 3. I, I'm more comfortable with the degrees over here. That is going to be cos 240. Anna? So cos 240 over is over here. If you have the calculators that give you the exact value, that is really fine. Okay. So that is going to be minus half. Anna? That is minus half. This is quarter into minus half. And then cos 2 pi by 3. That is going to be minus half. Anna? It is here in this area, 2, 120. So this is also minus half. This is half into minus half. And this is minus 1 over 4 and then minus half. There are so many halves here now. This is minus half into minus... Uh, so please put them in the calculator. Yeah, this is so annoying. This is minus 1 over 8, minus 1 over 4, minus 1 over 4, minus 1 over 2. This is minus 1 over 2 into this is 8, minus 1, minus 2, minus 2, minus 4. Hmm? This is minus into minus plus uh, 4 plus 5, 9 over 16. So this is 9 over 16. Let's check the answer quickly if this is really 9 over 16. Uh, this is question number, I think it's the last question. Okay, I think question number 10. Yeah. Question number 10. Uh, yeah, this is, thanks God, this is 9 over 16. Oh, so good to see the correct answer here. Okay, so going back to the paper and let's do its last part, guys. Okay. 
In the last part, it says uh, use the result of part one, express dy by dx in terms of cos 2x, and hence find the x coordinate of m, giving your answer correct to two decimal places. Okay, so this, please make me write this. What was that? Y equal to half the half sine 4x plus sine 2x. Okay, so we have to write this in terms of cos 2x. Okay, so let's find this dy by dx. This is half cos 4x times 4 plus cos 2x times 2. Okay. So it says we have to write this dy by dx in terms of cos 2x. So this is 2 cos 4x plus cos 2x. How can I write this cos 4x in terms of cos 2x? Do you remember 2 cos square x is 1 plus cos 2x, yes? Anna? So if I want this to be cos 4x, so this will be 2 cos square 2x is going to be 1 plus cos 4x. You see, I was thinking that this identity hasn't been in this paper so far. This has to be tested in you just go through any of P3, you will find this or the two sine square thing in your paper, okay? So let's change that with this. So this is gonna be, this cos 4x is gonna be two cos square 2x minus one. So this is two into two cos square 2x minus one. I think he, the examiner has done you a good favor by giving this clue over here because you had to put that equal to zero and you had to solve this equation. Okay. How would you solve this equation now? Yeah, you will let that this cos 2x is going to be any constant a, b, c or y over here. Okay. So let's put that equal to a. So let this, let this cos 2x be a. So we have 4a squared plus a minus 2 that is equal to 0. Can I factorize this? No? So let's use the quadratic formula quickly. Guys, please take out your guns and tell me what is this? The 4, 4, the 16, 2, the 32. Over this 8. So what are the two values of this A? Hmm. Yes. We have a hint here. A has to be between 1 and minus 1. Okay, we'll ignore anything which is beyond that. When 5, 9, 3, and 0 0.8. 0 0.8, 4, 3. Okay, I will be ignoring nevertheless this A as negative because, you know, if you go back to the diagram, the diagram is something like this, okay? And you have your M over here. This M has to have a positive value, okay? So um, I will be ignoring this. How can I ignore? No, no, I can't ignore this because it might take us to the second or the third quadrant, okay? So cos 2x is going to be, let me um, just remember those two values, okay? I'll be asking you because I want to clear this. Okay, so we have cos 2x either. What was that minus? Minus zero point? Eight four, okay, and then cos two x equal to zero point five. You must write this correct to four five decimal places because this is not the final answer here. Okay, zero point five nine three. Okay, so cos two x. So please tell me what is in in the radians. What is cos inverse of this? First of all, this point five nine three. Hmm. This is going to be in these two quadrants. And I have in my mind that my M has to have a X coordinate between pi by three and pi by two. Just keep this as a clue, okay? M has to be somewhere between pi by three and pi by two. 
So yes, uh, yes, beta. So I think this will give us the answer, 0.593. So what is cos inverse of 0.593? Come on, huh? 0.936. Okay, you half that. Half it. 468. Please check, is it between these two values or not? Let's, because this is going to take us to the second quadrant here. What is cos inverse of 0 0.843? 0 0.568. 0 0.568. Can you half that? 0 0.284. 0 0.284. Is that between this interval here? This will be. Hmm? You half that? Mm -hmm. So this was the basic angle over this was 2x basically 2x is going to be pi minus point five six eight and uh so 2x is going to be what is that pi minus point five six eight okay let me write it as pi minus point five six eight over two finally two point five 1.29 so this should be the answer let's check the answer quickly uh where is the answer yeah this is 1.29 okay thanks scott so this ends the paper successfully